parabolic path of action. When gravity is the only force, the path of action is a parabolic arc. For example, the path of action of a bouncing ball is a parabolic arc. The stream of water from a fountain is also a parabolic arc. Parabolic arcs are one of the four conic sections, which are curves that you get when you slice a cone. The other three conic sections are circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. The hyperbola looks similar to a parabola, but it rarely occurs as a path of action. Getting back to parabolic arcs, let's look at the path of action for a ball moving in the air. A ball rolling off of a table combines horizontal and vertical motion. In this example, falling starts with key number four, with vertical distances increasing as one to three to five to seven, that is, by the odd rule. Horizontal distances are equally spaced as with uniform motion. The resulting path of action is an arc that combines uniform horizontal motion with acceler accelerating vertical motion. Let's watch. Video tracking, frame by frame, shows that the horizontal motion stays uniform as the vertical motion slows out. Let's look at another demonstration. This apparatus is designed to release the ball on the left, which falls straight down. As it simultaneously fires the ball on the right, shooting it horizontally. Watch. Listen. In this demonstration, one ball is released and falls straight down. The other ball is fired horizontally. Notice that they hit the ground at the same time. Not only that, they are always at the same height as they fall. Falling motion follows the odd rule and the horizontal motion is uniform motion. We now know how to do the timing and spacing for motion on a parabolic arc. First, for a ball flying through the air, the rising and falling motion are the same. The horizontal spacings are uniform. Those spacings are large if the ball is going fast and short if it's going slow. The vertical spacings slow into the apex and then slow out of the apex according to the odd rule. Finally, the vertical spacings do not depend on the speed of the ball. This is important to remember, especially if you are animating several objects or characters in the air at the same time. You may also use fourth down at halftime for the timing and spacing of a parabolic arc. This rule says that the position at half time from the apex is a fourth of the way down. In this example, key number nine is the apex and number five is at half time between it and key number one. So we know that key number five is a fourth of the way down from the apex, as you see in this photo. You may have noticed that the parabolic arc in that photo of a circus performer flying through the air looks slightly distorted due to perspective. When the motion goes from foreground to background, the parabolic arc will look distorted due to perspective, but the spacings follow the same rules as for arcs in profile. Now, the most common error that occurs with arcs is making them too straight. This example is exaggerated to make the error obvious. In general, watch out for spacings that are too uniform 
in the vertical direction. Remember, the motion needs to slow into and out of the apex. Here's a path of action that's ridiculously straight, which makes it intentionally funny. What a great film. Here it goes. Another common error is to skew the arc so that it is steeper on one side than the other. This is most commonly seen when animating by straight ahead action. If the animator discovers that the arc is going to fall short of the desired landing spot. Finally, it's possible to have a path of action that has the right shape, yet have the wrong timing and spacing. For example, the path of action for these drawings is roughly shaped like a parabolic arc. However, the spacings for these drawings are not physically accurate since the horizontal spacings are not are constant and uniform. Let me say that again, the horizontal spacings are not constant and uniform. Furthermore, the vertical spacings do not slow into the apex. In summary, when gravity is the only significant force, the path of action is a parabolic arc. For a parabolic path of action, the horizontal spacings are constant and uniform. The vertical spacings are the same as for simple falling motion. That means you can use the odd rule and fourth down at halftime rules. Two common errors in drawing arcs are making the arc too straight and not having the apex centered. The path of action can have the right shape, but the timing and spacing can still be wrong. You have to check these separately. In the next video, we'll look at how to sketch parabolic arcs easily and quickly. This is a skill that's useful for both storyboard artists and traditional animators. It's even useful for computer animation since parabolic arcs are often used in the graph editor. See you then.